Okay, I'm going to call to order regular meeting distance, uh, yeah, I'm sure, of the uh, North Reading Public School School, School Committee. Um, begin as usual with public input. None. All right, in the student report, uh, we have Jensen Kayetamatin. Pretty good? Pretty good. <laughs> he said Jensen, right? Yeah, he Was said he Jensen. There you go. <laughs> class of 2017. Yes. Uh, I, I had a, a very good friend uh, named Rangsi Ratana Prakan. Huh. It took me a couple of minutes yeah. <laughs> to get that one straight. Too. <laughs> All right. Um, for sports, um, fall sports are in full swing, and all, every team is doing very well. Uh, football and golf remain undefeated at 3-0 and and 7-0, and respectively. Um, record high of 364 athletes this year, uh, up from 341 from last year. Um, in academics, the SATs are coming up this weekend. Um, Parent night is, uh, uh, was this past Thursday. Um, and post-secondary planning night for parents of seniors are uh, Wednesday, September 28th at 6.30. Um, college admissions officers are coming into Power Block over the past couple weeks. Um, today was Providence College. Uh, voting registration uh, clerk has been uh, has come to the North Reading High School for ages 16 and older to start register uh, registration for voting. Uh, clubs are in full swing, and there is a, um, a student club a student club fair on September 30th for all incoming for all freshmen uh, to learn more about the clubs and other events that are going on in the high school. During the summer, there was a college app boot camp uh, which I attended. Uh, it was about fifty dollars. Um, and all the students were able to get a jump start on their uh, college applications um, about what colleges to apply to and what each college requires in terms of supplements and, uh, and uh, general essays. Um, guidance will be talking to seniors in the, uh, this coming week just about uh, Naviance and the use of Naviance and how to ask for teacher recommendations and uh, how to go about the, uh, the whole process. Uh, for the arts, the auditions for Oliver are going on uh, are ongoing and for my student work sample I brought in a uh, something from my ceramics class uh, it's like a Greek it's, it's about Greek pottery um, there, are di there are many different kinds um, as sh like shown here uh, I'm working on a, a piece called Lebes I'm not really sure if I said that right but <laughs> um, and they're just like just molding it around so it's, this is like kind of like a smaller size of what they used to have so I can pass this around if pass it around. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have the rubric with uh, different types here. Did you work in progress? <laughs> did you use our new kilns for this? Uh, they're go yeah. Soon, once it, once it's ready, it'll be fired up. In oh, the, I see. Yeah. It's still in its still it's still, still, still in its building primitive stage. form. Yeah, getting there. <laughs> Don't drop the it, spinning Jared. wheel thing. Not yet. Yeah. So some of the some of the students like have started using that, pass. but yeah. it's like. Uh, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a, a lot problem. of work. It's don't like don't drop. Uh, Miss Atlas was teaching us how to do it, and, and she was showing us like you got to keep your like hands straight. And she was demonstrating how it works, and it was it was a lot of work. <laughs> but this part, what we do is we just take like long pieces of clay and then coil it around, uh -huh. and then just blend the pieces together. So if you look, you can kind of yeah, see some of see the, the yeah. Yeah, so if you blend those in a little bit better, but yeah. other than that, you kind of you kind of just like wrap it up and build up. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> any, any further questions or comments? The students enjoy the, uh, the yeah class. ceramics is a great class yeah for sure. <laughs> pretty sure, Mr. Chairman. I think, I think we're running four sections this year. It's yeah, this is this pretty is pretty popular. Good yeah. Is that something you teach? And the new studio is thank you. <laughs> very conducive to yeah. its popularity. You, you take that every <laughs> day nice, nice facility. Or every other day. Every other day. Every, every other day. Other day. Yep. And will you give, put give you an on it as well? So. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are some paintings, so you, you can use acrylic paints to like uh, depict things. But yeah, usually you paint it right out after it's fired up in the kiln. Yeah. Gives you a greater appreciation of all of the artwork that you see. Right. In, in yeah, <laughs> it's a lot harder than, <laughs> than than I thought it would be. <laughs> Good. Thank you, sir. Back to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. You're not staying? Thank you. Oh, I wish. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> run, run while you can. Run and don't look back. You have to bring that back to us as, you, as you're moving yeah. along yeah. on it. Yeah. 
We want to see that when it's finished. Oh, I'll bring it in. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is uh, continuing business, continued business, uh, MSBA SBC update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just a couple of items to, to highlight tonight um, since the last meeting. I, I would add for you that um, the work is continuing with the, um, with the soil replacement at the site of the former high school. Um, much work has been done, but there is still some remaining work um, to be done with regard to that. I actually, with, uh, with Mr. Connolly, <coughs> was down at the site um, twice today, but yeah. uh, at one, of the, one of the times we were down um, did get an update that um, that, that work is, is scheduled to take place soon. Um, so I'm hoping that we will see some progress um, um, soon as we, so we can capture the growing season for what needs to be hydro seeded as those, as those uh, adjacent areas to the two fields. The second thing I would highlight for you is that, um, as I did at the September 12th meeting, that there is uh, ongoing testing of the drainage lines. Um, that work continues to um, help develop a, a remedy for um, the existing conditions. I do not have any additional information from that. We had a building committee meeting last week. Um, it was expressed at that meeting that that plan would be forthcoming um, in September, but I have not I have not received any information as of tonight. And then the last thing I would add is just that um, we continue to work with um, with our project manager PMA on uh, and uh, the Doran Whittier architectural firm to to address punch list items. Um, that list is is shrinking, which is a good thing. Um, there are a few outstanding items to be addressed, but um, they are they are continuing with the back punching of any of those remaining items on the list. One. One uh, question, is, have they done anything with that work they were going to do in the uh, parking lot over by the wastewater plant? Yes, they I, have. I didn't see anything. On the identification, of, they were going to explore the joints to see right. what the extent of the damage was. They did begin that work, yes. Can you tell me when they did <laughs> with that? The, when they did that, I think it was last Thursday or Friday. Okay. I think it was Thursday or Friday was because I think it was at our building committee meeting on Tuesday they had indicated they would be doing that by the end of the week. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, it's not always true to, to form, but... Um, Mr. Chair? One word, frustration. I mean, these people don't want to get this job done. And, and I'm, I'm not on the building committee, but I go to every meeting, and I'm at my wit's end with this project. That's all. I think that... You can safely take the building project off continuing business sometime in 2020. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Well, the list, my list, my report is getting shorter. I hope I'm looking at that as somewhat of a good sign. But there are still items remaining. There's no question about that. At the, at the last uh, SSBC meeting, I asked that uh, we get a written schedule. Yes. And uh, I'm great expecting suggestion. that that's going to happen. And if it doesn't, then we'll be having to give them an edict on that. Point. John, do, do you have any sense of when they're going to be through pushing dirt around out, down there so we can start the irrigation project? I do. I, I don't know. Do you, if we can certainly talk about that now, or do you want to talk about it as part of the athletic facility? I, I, talk about I, it I, now. Have, I have a good amount of information on that. So I sent an email late today to um, the folks that are involved with the athletic facilities committee, as well as Dorm Whittier. Um, project management associates, our architect, the town administrator, and such, all, all of the people that I thought needed to be informed of, of where things were at. And what, what that email essentially said was that the work that was done today was extensive on the, on the leveling of the all-purpose field. The softball diamond is not an issue, so right. it's, I'm talking about the, the, the all-purpose rectangular field, um, that that work is to be completed tomorrow. They were the uh, pine and swallow, the soil subcontractor for Brown Sardinia was out today, found a couple of areas that, they, that he thought, Mike Argonis thought was, was over compacted. They're coming back tomorrow to address those and finish the grading. The surveyor is supposed to be here tomorrow. Um, weed and feed, the, the contractor that's been assigned the work for the sod and irrigation is due to start on Wednesday. Um, Maybe. He, he, no, that's definite. He confirmed that with Marty Tilton today. Can he start even if the field's not ready? Uh, my, my belief is he's already doing the work. If you remember, at the pre there was a pre-construction meeting last Thursday, and he indicated that he would be doing a lot of his work at the shop. I don't know if you recall that about the pipe right. configurations and such. So I, he, he delivered a lot of his equipment today um, on the softball diamond so that he can start the work. I have no reason to think that he's not starting on Wednesday. Now, there is predictions for some poor weather tomorrow and into Wednesday, whether, you know, to the degree that that hampers his schedule, I don't know. Um, 
The other bit of information I would add is that you might recall there was a change order that we had issued on the maintenance of the fields that was going to reduce the cost of the project. That change order was signed um, with no correction, no edit to the substantial completion date of October 21st. So that is still the target date. Um, my conversations, Michael was there with, with me for one of them this morning with Marty Tilton when we were down at the site. Um, was, I mean, he, you know, he's far, he's far more informed about the whole sod and irrigation world than I am, but he indicated that there was no issues with the timeline. The timeline. They feel very comfortable that the irrigation work is about two weeks, and then once the, um, once the sod work begins, it's a rather quick, quick process. So the, the hang-up right now is the preparation of the site in order to receive the work, but as of probably three or four hours ago, it's, it's all, all indications are that we're looking at. I, I, I appreciate all the efforts that people have made from the various companies to get this done. But the point is it should have been ready from day one. We were told that field was ready. They've been on that since Thursday. It's Thursday, Friday, Monday, and now Tuesday. It's, it's just ludicrous. And it's just more of my frustration with this project and the total lack of commitment by the companies that are working on this project. I've had it. I, do, I would just add that on the timing, when we asked Weed and Feed for a, um, an estimate on what it would take for him to prepare the site, he didn't indicate four to five days. Um, so I, you know, I think we're still, we're still kind of within that, that schedule right now. Anything further? Okay, next item on the agenda is the school, the 2016-2017 school committee goals. Um, it's a copy of the, the draft in your packet. Um, any comments or is it ready to go? And if it's ready to go, let's have a motion. I don't care if I ever see it again. Uh, so, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's ready to go. Is that Did a you, motion? Yeah. <laughs> Can you put that in the form? Are you looking for a motion for the uh, to approve yes. the goals and, and, uh, yes. and, and the action plan? Timeline. Right. And the action plan and timeline. I move to approve the superintendent's professional practice goals for 2016-17, as well as the action plan and the timeline that was uh, attached. Second. Made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Uh, next item on the agenda is the fiscal 18, 2018 North Reading Public Schools Capital Improvements Plan. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you. So in your packet this evening was a short memorandum and a list of um, priorities that the administrative team had set um, following the large capital plan presentation that took place at the September 12th school committee meeting. So the administrative team again reviewed the list of submitted projects for review that were proposed at the last meeting um, and we have essentially focused on when we went to rank the projects uh, what projects would have the greatest impact on school safety as well as the largest educational impact on student learning um, and I'll refresh your memory that the capital improvement planning committee or CIPC is essentially requesting projects for three years, which would bring us through fiscal 18 through fiscal 2020. So I know last um, meeting you received a presentation in, a, in the capital plan through five years. So the list that's in front of you this evening for discussion and consideration is a priority list that would submit projects through, uh, to the CIPC for their review um, over the next three years. These projects are due by the end of the month, um, by this Friday. Um, and to just highlight some um, for fiscal 2018, as we discussed at the presentation, we made it clear that the elementary wireless infrastructure upgrade is the administrative team's top priority. 
Uh, that is the, the largest uh, you know, cost item for, um, on the plan, but we do feel it is essential to allow the district to meet its digital learning goals. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we are aggressively pursuing alternative funding options, grants, et cetera, um, a zero percent loan program that we hope to have much more thorough and in, in information on um, when we appear in front of the CIPC later on this uh, calendar year in December um, that we hope to you know, try to reduce the cost of that project to the town. Um, but that would be the priority projects, computer devices, um, the ongoing computer devices initiative, replacements, and, and new devices to add to the fleet continues to be a priority, as you can see on the, in the plan. Um, and then focusing on fiscal 18, the Bachelor Peabody Street entrance way, again, public safety, um, the utility vehicle toolcat, focusing on the safety of the staff, students, and the public, and increasing efficiencies. And uh, we also see that as a cost saving initiative. Um, and then the item that generated some discussion at the last meeting would be the Hood School modular uh, you know, demolition project we put as the fifth. Uh, priority item in fiscal 18. Um, so I guess, you know, I think you, everyone saw the detailed presentation at the last meeting, uh, received the detailed plan. I guess I'll just, uh, you know, at that point turn it over to discussion to see if there's general questions or if there's consensus on the priority or if there's, you know, recommendations for changes. Uh, I guess I'll open it up to discussion. So the CI, they're asking for three-year plans now? They are. So that, that process began a year ago where we used to at, CIPC used to only request, you know, a, on an annual basis. They started requesting plans for three years out. I, I will say that the, the focus will continue, will be fiscal 18. That's where we spend, the CIPC members spend the majority of their time and their focus and discussions. And when department heads come out, you know, they will be focused on the fiscal 18 projects. but. We do look at, uh, in a, as we are nearing completion of the process, we'd look at fiscal 19 and 20, see what's coming down the pipeline. As we begin to develop a funding strategy, um, those conversations of what's coming, uh, you know, we, they are looked at. But certainly the focus is on fiscal 18. Well, I know Julie's on the committee, so I, I want to make sure that all departments are submitting three-year plans and not just That's us. correct. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes that has a tendency to slip by. Um, I, I, I don't want to call the computer devices replacement, and I'm not going to support this if the um, Hood School modular demolition is this year. I think we're asking for way too much this year, and I don't think that that's a priority. Okay. We did make a plan, at least in fiscal 18, um, on the priority list. We've made an, an alteration to call those computer devices and you know, slash replacements because it's it's a call as we discussed last last. Um, at the last meeting, you know, certainly it's, it's a little bit of both. You know, we look to add to the fleet, and we've we've adopted the Chromebook model cart, which continues to work well. And we also look at where replacements need to be made. So it's it's a combination of the two, and we would we plan on clarifying that in, in the description. Okay. Can we assume that anything that, uh, as as Mel suggested, if we don't approve number five? That, that gets pushed into the next fiscal yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, if someone wants to make that as a suggestion, I don't think you know we can certainly discuss that. Um, okay. That was as we discussed at the last meeting. Certainly, the administration's attempt to be a little bit forward-thinking and a little bit thinking at you know what's what's coming down down the road and um, those certainly modular classroom units will need to be uh, addressed. There is a chance that we can push that off a year. And if that's the desire of the committee, I think we could, um, uh, you know, to put that into fiscal 19. But I, I th certainly, I think in the three-year immediate plan being submitted to CIPC, it's something that has to be on the radar. But it certainly be something that could be could be pushed out a year, and we could we're continuing to maintain those well. And and um, but you know, it's reaching that point where they're coming to the end of their their useful life. To that to that point, if I could, Mr. Chairman, sure. Just we just this in the last several days, we did. Um, under Wayne Hardick's direction, some extensive work to the handicapped accessibility ramp mm -hmm. that surrounds the module. So w they're, they're certainly functional. They, I think we could push this out a year. I think we could. Um, but I think to Michael's point of putting it on the radar, I think right now for both the, this committee and the finance planning team was, um, was the spirit of, of, of raising it for fiscal year 18. So to have this discussion now is something to be thinking about. 
And these are all estimates, the cost estimates? Uh, yeah, so w every um, estimate, certainly in fiscal 18, does come with a proposal. We did work pretty hard over the summer to get proposals and solicit vendors and quotes and bring companies in and do site walkthroughs at times, which was the place for the Hood School Modular de Demolition Project. And we did receive proposals, and then we kind of looked at that and maybe added a little inflationary factor to that, given that this is something that would be out to bid a, a year or two from now. Um, but proposals were received. Are you looking for a motion to approve the entire plan for all Yeah, the I think what we're doing is looking for a motion to endorse the plan. If someone wants to certainly make a motion to move the Hood School modular demolitions to fiscal 19 and, and some you know, type of priority adjustment, we can make note of that and approve a motion as, as amended. And then when I submit the CIPC sheets, I'll certainly put that in the, the recommended order by the committee. Julie? I just have a question about the Batchelder entranceway. Is it a safety hazard at this point that we're risking, you know, injury from teachers, from students? Can you describe? Sure. I think, I think. What um, needs to be repaired and what will happen so if it's we don't? Certainly the front stairwell, there's been some decay and deterioration of that whole front stairwell entrance. So I believe it involves replacement of the you know the concrete, concrete. Mm -hmm. you know stairwell it's i don't think it's any immediate danger but it certainly there's there's an erosion and deterioration that's taking place that we think needs to be addressed um, it would also involve some repairs to the wooden columns right. that would have to prove um, go through the historical commission and district uh, society commission to get approval of those repairs but we would look to do that um, and we re we've received proposals in the 22, 23,000 range, and again, we think um, you know this would qualify as a large capital project. So, we don't think there's any immediate danger. Certainly, um, you know, to students and staff and the public assessing the school through that entrance. But we do feel that it, its repairs are needed, and it's it's something that needs to be addressed in the near future. Mike, do we regularly use that that entrance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. I know most of the students and faculty. There's a lot of parent drop off up at PB up at Street. The top there You're PB. right. There is the, okay. the turnaround is, yeah. I would say, used more yeah. at the at the lower yeah. entrance. And I did show some photos of it at the, in the plan. It, it looks okay. I mean, it's it's in it's in um, certainly. And correct me if I'm wrong, but she, wasn't there some sort of remediation to the area at one point? But yeah. that yeah, it's been more of like a patching kind sure. of program that we're on, sure. and I think we're at the point now where it's kind it's of. It's not okay running out of time to, you know, years that we can continue to patch. At some point you end up by having a problem mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden it's not a good idea to have a right. problem. Right. It's better to do it ahead of time and not have the problem in the first place. Yeah, my feeling is on a three-year plan, obviously <clears> the <throat> most important aspect of this is FY18 and then Next year we reprioritize. We reprioritize, and regardless of what we have, we always there, we'll look at what gets funded and what doesn't yeah. get funded, and reprioritize, and that's the process we go through. Yes, Julie. Um, as far as the utility vehicle, the Toolcat, do we have an estimated cost savings with a purchase of that? You know what the district may save in plowing or mowing. Sure, I think um, there's certainly a almost like an opportunity cost savings there where. You know the staff that we do have the in-house staff that are involved would be able to be extremely more efficient okay. so we think it's a combination where we would reduce overtime costs i think wayne's put a number on anywhere between five and ten you know ten thousand dollars so it's somewhere in that range of a five to six year payback i think is a fair estimate there also could be some savings where there could be less contracted services uh snow snow removal um if if we have a a bad winter and we have to remove some snow from areas of the parking lot, the snow banks for public safety. Um, this is a vehicle that could be utilized. Um, it also has an attachment for sweeping and we, we could utilize it in the spring, you know, months um, for sweeping and reduce some contacted services as well. So I think conservatively speaking, I think it's anywhere in that five to, you know, depending on the winter, obviously, um, you know, five to seven thousand, ten thousand dollar range. A question, Cliff? Michael, um, uh, on the Selectman's meeting last week, they were talking about the fact that in the past they've approved funds for projects that have never been completed and are still not done. Uh, I'm assuming we've, uh, we've completed all the projects that we've so requested money for, We have correct? completed all the projects except for one. We continue um, to assess and 
plan on beginning work, you know, hopefully in the near future, we're working with the, the vendor and on the, the, the elementary phone upgrade. Oh, yeah. So that, that's the only one, and I've, I've actually spoken to the Board of Selectmen at meetings about um, that project, but we, we, I think we are actually very close to potentially beginning that project. Okay. As recent as last Thursday, yeah. we had a meeting with the contractor about that. Everything else has been complete, completed. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve the uh, three-year capital improvement plan uh, as submitted with the exception of uh, number five, the high school modular demo, I'm sorry, the hood school modular demolition, which I would move to, to move into FY19 for consideration. Is a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, and the next item on our agenda is the Middle School Washington, D.C. trip. This is a problem. We've used the same company, Capital Tours, at least sin since. We've used this. No, no, it's, it's, it's just for the, okay, it's just, just the cable. Okay. We've used the same company, Capital Tours, since I have been here, which is five years. And before that, and before that it was also Capital Tours. M Mr. Maloney and I decided over the summer that it was time to look at other vendors and see what other opportunities there might be to bring our business to. There were several reasons for that. Just overall, some dissatisfaction with the level of service we were receiving from Capital Tours. From anything like the buses, you know, driving down to Washington, D.C. with 200 middle schoolers and 25 or 30 adults, we weren't always happy with the quality of the buses, the quality of the bus drivers the quality of the hotel when we actually arrived in Washington, D.C., and then the overall quality of the service, as you can imagine, being in Washington, D.C. at a very popular time in the spring with lots of other middle schools <coughs> across the country, we just felt we didn't have the level of service uh, that we thought there might be other vendors who could offer that to us. So, for example, with this company, and we can go through the prices, but with this company, there is an on-call doctor. So. Although we will still bring a nurse, there is a doctor on call for our students. And as you know, uh, unfortunately, many of our students have medical needs that, that you know, we can't necessarily meet just with a, with a school nurse that we would bring on the trip. Additionally, there is a, a higher level of, of hotel, so we'll be staying at a better quality hotel. The hotel we've been staying at for since, again, since 2011 is adequate but we had some problems last year that we, we were just unhappy with one being that when we arrived actually when mr maloney arrived um the rooms had not really yet been assigned to the students and there was some mismanagement on the hotel's part and the company's part for getting us all settled in and students are anxious traveling that far and that n first night you want to have a seamless entry into the hotel and get everybody settled and get to bed and that just didn't happen so for for those reasons and others we decided to spend some time over the summer investigating other other companies and world strides is the company that we've decided to go with with your approval and the packet is pretty detailed uh, there is a price increase uh, last year, the cost was $793. This year, the cost is $929. So it's an increase of $130, I think, which we're not you know, downplaying and, and certainly don't want to underestimate the financial burden that this trip places on families. However, World Strides does offer some innovative um, financial assistance opportunities, and that's explained in the packet. But for any family making less than, I think it's $85,000 a year, they, they will offer a reduction in the cost of the trip, and that's not something that Capital Tours would do. Capital Tours did help us by giving us some scholarship money for every full bus that we had, but it wasn't anything based on family need. 
So this is an, a nice opportunity. They also have a great kind of uh, PR program where students can reach out to relatives who may not live in the area and ask sort of, you know, ask for, you know, assistance with my trip to Washington, D.C., but it's all online. There's, there's nothing really that, that we would need to do, but they could reach out to their aunt in Seattle, and the aunt could add money to their account should they, should they choose to do that. And there's also, do you want to talk a little bit about the special fund that they have? Uh, there's an additional fund for scholarship. This is what they call a help fund, where, again, uh, any money, they, they offer a lot of incentives for teachers and, and the trip coordinator. Um, to, to run their program. So they, they provide a packet, this is your trip packet, and then you implement their plan. So instead of us taking those incentives, we added it to this, this help fund, which, which allows us, the school, to offer any financial assistance that um, families may need uh, who, who cannot afford it outside of the, the um, reduction that World Strides would, would provide. Um, also, any fundraising that we may do uh, specifically for the tour, uh, for the trip, could go into that that help fund. Um, so, usually, uh, typically, our parents' association would give us some money, and that would go into that help fund. So that would offset some of the costs for, for for some of our families. But just overall, the level of service that World Strides I feel provides, and we did quite a bit of research. I, I spoke to a number of different schools uh, who use World Strides, and, and they're very happy with their service. With Capital Tours, the, the tour guide was wearing a lot of hats. Uh, she was the tour guide, uh, the hotel liaison, uh, you know, the all around, if there was a problem, Ruth would, would fix it. But with World Strides, they have an assignment for each of those positions. So there's actually a hotel team that goes in prior to us arriving, check to make sure all the rooms are, are booked off, there are all the kids on the same floor, that the the keys are assigned, and while we're there, if the, that person's on site the entire time, we can go to that person for, for the hotel. So I'm not in the front of the bus trying to organize keys for, for 200 kids. Uh, so it's just a lot of little things, little detail-oriented things that World Strides um, is pledging to do a lot better than Capital Tours. I would just add the itinerary didn't change. It's the same itinerary. So it's the same experience with a higher quality hotel We've been told better buses, so the whole experience should be of higher quality, but there is the, the increase in price. So we are here tonight to ask for your approval to begin meeting and planning for the 2017 eighth grade trip to Washington, D.C. Is the increase in, in price over last year, or is it over this year with capital versus i didn't get a price from capital tours for so 2017 it may be just an increase in cost it because of it price. could be that capital tours would have they had gone up every year i do not think that they would have gone up to 929 dollars but it, it's reasonable to think that they could have gone over the 800 threshold it was actually in addition to the itinerary the uh the air and space Smithsonian, the Udvar Hazy Air and Space, which is out by Dallas Airport, which has the, the space shuttle and, and some other larger aircraft that, that the air and space does not have downtown. So that's that's an addition to that. And also the opportunity to go to, I think it's in Monticello or an, another another stop. Mount Vernon. Oh. Mount Vernon, I'm sorry. Right, Mount Vernon. Another stop on the way down to King's Dominion, which is the amusement park. So they've actually added a, a couple things in. Uh, to the itinerary, so it's as, as busy as we were previously. We're going to be a little bit busier, but I think for the for the better. And not not that there's been an official program previously, but they also have an education component that I don't know what it would, would apply to us because it's more of an American history um, program. But th there are opportunities for an educational component, a formal educational component, not only you know the trip experience and learning about the. Washington when we're down there, but a, a formalized program that we could explore if, if that's something that, you know, we thought would be uh, valuable. Any well, I think, that, I think that would be because right now eighth grade is doing ancient civilization, so if they have something that kind of pertains to what they're seeing, that would be helpful. They do a nice unit in eighth grade ELA in the spring on the Holocaust, yeah. so although it's not in their social studies class, they do, uh, I think, a, a, a great job providing students with a context for what they're going to see when they go to D.C., at least with regard to the Holocaust. But as a prior history teacher, I do feel strongly that, 
the, the educational component is lost a little bit on the students because unfortunately they have not had U.S. history really, you know, some in elementary school, but they won't get it until ninth grade. I ask this every year. How many students um, stayed behind last year and took advantage of the alternative activities? I think about 12 last year. 193 students went on the trip. Uh, approximately 193 students went on the trip, and there was a little over 200 students in the grade 8 class last year, so about a dozen. This looks like a, a much um, more solid company. I, I have a problem with the price. I'm, I'm going to support it, but I, I just, we're creeping up towards $1,000, and I just, I, I, I don't know. It, that just starts to worry me a little bit. But I, I, the company seems like it's um, highly qualified. I, I don't disagree. I also had concern over the price. However, in the reality of the, of the issues that we're dealing with today, taking 200 kids to Washington, D.C. fills me with anxiety, and I want them to enjoy their, their time and be safe. I feel like this company can provide a level of service that will better ensure every effort will be made to, to keep them safe. And, and I like the idea that anybody under 85000 immediately gets a reduction in, in that price, which wasn't something that the other company offered. And it, they mentioned in here chaperones. Like it's almost as if they provide them, but we <coughs> provide the chaperones, right? We provide the they chaperones. They mentioned something about they provide one chaperone for every 15 they, students. We don't have to pay for the chaperone okay, for every so. one. For, we actually got that. We negotiated and got that down to so that we can bring more chaperones at their cost. So when we bring chaperones, they do not pay. And we do one per 10, right? That's what we did with Capital Tours. We're, we're going to go one to 12 with World Strides. I thought our school policy was one yeah, our to 10. It is for an overnight. Well, all that means, though, then, is that Mr. Maloney or Mrs. Jones, we, we usually bring three extra, an administrator. Mrs. Jones is the teacher leader who runs the Washington, D.C. trip. We don't assign them chaperone students. So Mr. Maloney doesn't have a group of students. Mrs. Jones doesn't have a group of students. The guidance counselor that goes doesn't have a group of students. So the the ratio is higher in terms of, I think it's like, like I said before, 23, 24 adults. And we can certainly assign easily Mrs. Jones a group and the guidance counselor a group. I think it is the ratio. I think we will do, then we will do that. I think as long as the ratio yeah. is. That, ratio, right. that ratio would fit. Yeah as, yeah. as long as the ratio is one to 10, that's yeah. fine. I, I, that's all I wanted to make yeah. sure we're at. That's all. You said some magic words for me, better buses and better drivers. <laughs> and you seem to be pretty happy about that, so. The driving down and the driving back, although not enjoyable, is a very important part of the trip from the safety component. And yeah. ensuring that the children are safe on the buses is, is paramount to the trip. It's it causes me panic every year. Didn't you have the bus break down once or twice? We didn't have buses break down. We had bus drivers who were um, difficult to work with, politically correct. Bus drivers who were not uh, amenable to being it is, flexible. It is a lot of money, but if, if a parent were to take the family on a vacation down in Washington, D.C., I think it would cost at least that amount per child. And the opportunity to go, some of these kids may never get down there again. So I think I don't think you could go to a more educational type of setting than mm. in Washington D.C. and you have a very full uh, itinerary there too. And for the record, Mrs. O'Connell has always brought back the same number of kids yes. that she went down with. Not necessarily the same ones, yeah. but at least the same number. She, but I mean, it's I, I I share your anxiety. I don't know how you do it. I mean, going down with 200 eighth graders is is a challenge <laughs> for sure. Mrs. Imbriano, just to, to your point, buses haven't broken down where we you know, had to have another bus come and get us, but toilets have broken, air conditionings have broken, some buses have Wi-Fi, other buses don't, which in a middle school world, mm -hmm. why doesn't my bus yeah. have Wi-Fi, the other bus has Wi-Fi, so a consistent, safe, working bus with facilities and air conditioning is obviously something that we would desire. Well, the, the year I went down, I don't remember what year it was, it was prior to um, you being the principal, but one of the buses did break down. Luckily, it was right around the time we were stopping for lunch on the way back, and they got the problem fixed um, relatively quickly. But, yeah, it was capital tours as well. Yeah. When, when you get the specifics, like what hotel and all that, will that be passed along to us just so we can 
course. Because it doesn't it just doesn't have the details on here, right? It says Amber, who's our, our trip coordinator presently, um, says it's, it's a married level. Oh, okay. So that 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 level mm. hotel. We That's three from the staff. It was a comfort in. Yeah. That's definitely much a uh, step up from where we were staying before. And most of the anxiety is just getting the roommate assignment straightened out, right? Yes. I mean, that's a big part of it, because I get a call every single yes. day. Yes. <laughs> Very stressful time of year for middle school administrators. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's a rite of passage. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for those students who take advantage of it. Well, considering I have an eighth grader who will be going on the trip, I'm very happy with are you going as a chaperone? I am not allowed to accompany. <laughs> but then he'll have a good time. But <laughs> I, I think this, as you said, it calms my fears. I mean, I think the, the doctor on call at GW is, is wonderful. Um, yeah, so thank you. Also, they have an office in Washington, D.C. that is open 24 hours a day. There's, there's plenty of space for people. Mm, and you that's should interesting. Take your I like that. It's all... Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, wow. It was easy when the Nationals stunk, but now that they're good, it's harder to get tickets, right? Hey, do we have a motion? That's right. I move to approve the uh, annual eighth grade uh, trip to Washington, D.C from June 12th to June 16th, 2017. Do we also okay. have to include the alternative trip, or is that a separate motion? Yes. The alternate, no, I think we yes, could include the, package, the same. The, package the alternative trip for those students who aren't going to be attending um, the, the uh, Washington DC. <coughs> you try to replicate, uh, to the degree possible, a similar experience for students who choose to stay home. And I tell the students when we meet with them, and it's the truth. You can ask my father. I, d I w would not. We didn't have a DC trip, but I would not have been able to go as an eighth grade student to be away from home for an entire week. So I do tell kids it's okay to choose the day trip option. It's a wonderful, in you know, enrich enriching opportunity for you to spend time with your you know your eighth grade peers and to see some things in our area that you may not have seen before. So it's definitely, I think, a, a good itinerary for children who are deciding to stay home. There are hundreds of thousands of people who pay a lot of money to do that every year. Come to Boston. Right. <laughs> I made a motion. Any, any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the North Reading Middle School General Arts Schedule. So, Mr. Chairman, if, if I could just at, at the goals workshop in August, um, the question had been asked of me about the, um, the general arts schedule um, at the middle school. So I asked Ms. O'Connell to, to, to meet with me and she put together, I think, a very nice uh, white paper summary here of, of how the general arts schedule um, works at the middle school. And being that uh, Ms. O'Connell is going to be at the meeting tonight, I thought I would put this on the agenda. And, and you've, had, you've all had an opportunity to, to read this if you wished. And if there were any questions, uh, Ms. O'Connell has told me that she would be agreeable to, to answering those for you. I have one question to start. Um, one of my concerns is, is it's, I, I was under the impression that everybody was required to take health. And this makes it I'm sorry, like to take health? Health class. Health. Everyone's required to take physical education. There isn't a yearly requirement to take health. So we had Ms. Brown here presenting us the new upgrades to the health program. And I guess I'm concerned that all kids might not be taking that. I, that's a, a big concern of mine. She, Mrs. Brown knows how we run health at the middle school, and she hasn't said to me, I mean, I'll certainly inquire with her if there, there is a problem, but. No, I'm just saying, I, I think all kids should be taking health. That's. I, I agree, and they, every, the law says that every student needs to take physical education. So right. I philosophically agree with you that everyone should take health. And, and for a typical student who doesn't require any specialized service, they do take health, mm -hmm. but if someone unfortunately requires specialized instruction or specialized service, it does happen during that time. So there, what we would do is work to ensure that they did get health in seventh grade or in eighth grade. 
And what about the band and chorus kids? They that also, it happens at the same time. So if, if they take band and chorus, we try to give them health for sure, but then they're limited. What happens is then they're limited with their other offerings like tech ed and robotics and video production. So it becomes, uh, it becomes a, a choice of what is the priority for that particular child. You know, in terms of if they have very limited, limited space in their schedule, the discussion becomes, and again, this would be for students who receive specialized instruction and or choose band and chorus. It takes, band and chorus take up space in a, in a student's schedule. Right. So therefore they are limited with what else they can take. And health is something that we try to put first in the, in the empty spaces, but you, you know, you do occasionally get a parent who will say, my child <coughs> loves art loves art more than anything and only has one opportunity each semester for general arts due to specialized instruction that they receive or because they choose also to be in band and chorus. So we will work with them to try to give them art one semester and health the second semester. Okay, and then uh, this isn't like a criticism of you or the curriculum, but I just think with all the issues we have these days with pregnancy, drugs, et cetera, I, I just think our curriculum should require kids to take health. What I could do is I could I could come back or I could give the superintendent a percentage of the students who do take health okay. at the middle school. And I, I know you're you're I, I know what you're doing, but I'm I'm saying from a, a higher level, I think it's something that we ought to look at. Like personally. a curric curriculum level. Yes, I at think a curriculum it's level. It's very important that middle schoolers are getting PE and health. Exactly. And I, don't, I, I don't think you would find any argument sure. from any educator that doesn't see that as a priority. Right. That's part of why the discussion took place last spring about right. us modifying the health curriculum for the middle school. I think we see we all would see that as being highly valuable. It's a matter of <coughs> the schedule right. and the ability to afford that for yeah. those uh, my guess would be it's a relatively yeah, and I can level. get I can get that percentage at each grade awesome level. Students that aren't going to have that all three years. Would it be a staffing issue where we'd have to have um, increased staff? It's not a staffing it's issue. issue. It's, time. Time. it's it's not a staff. A it's day. it's a finding the space in the student schedule issue. So because the only way to do it would be to to knock off knock out one of those other electives yeah. and say, right to to bump all have to, to bump out. PE down to two times yeah. instead of three times a week. I, we could certainly look at doing I'm that. Not recommending that. I'm yeah, just or to re, or to take away, you know, it's a it's a good problem to have in a way because as I as I explained when I was hired, Superintendent Willis said, you know, other than acclimating to the middle school, you need to reduce study halls oh, I know. I immediately. Thinking, I remember that. And so what we did was we built a robust, pretty fantastic general arts program yep. of, of you know great enrichment opportunities. It's not that we have too many, because if a typical child who requires no specialized instruction and who chooses not to take course in band gets everything. They get everything every year. But if they choose band and chorus, it's reduced. And if they have specialized instruction, it's reduced. But we, I mean, we, we looked at it two summers ago. We looked at other middle school models. There's, unfortunately, because we want to increase time instruction in the content area, there is a you know a, a finite time. There's a frozen block during the day for general arts, and it isn't a staffing issue at all. Okay. It's more of where to place the kids. So we could help that by extending the school day. We could extend the school day. Good idea. I just have a follow-up question about the band and chorus. So that is, can they take both? Yes. They can take both. Yes. If they take and both, they go to chorus on days one, three, five, and band on two, four, so six. Is every other. Yeah. Okay. What happens with band and chorus? What happens with band and chorus? That I didn't think so. What? I'm sorry. The, it's probably what you're about to say, but the band and chorus will it is going to have an other block in the morning. It is a but, heavy day block, you know. But Buffy, what she asked was, can they take band and chorus? Okay. They can take so band and chorus. Yeah. If they take band and chorus, they go to the grade level chorus when the entire grade six chorus meets. Yeah. They go to those on, it's one, three, five, I believe. And then on two, four, six, they go to the grade level band where the whole group band works together. Okay. On the other days, if they're not taking the other chorus or band, they meet and still in the chorus room, but they will practice by voice type or they will practice by instrument type. So Mr. Foreman may work with, on the days when it's not the full band, right? If For kids who take band and chorus, 
when they have not the full band-aids yeah. on days two, four, six, say, or one, three, five, they will work by woodwinds or percussion or, or you know, brass. And the other kids are there working independently on their own instrument. But Mr. Foreman is particularly working with one group of students to, you know, get that particular part of the band in shape. So someone who takes band and chorus goes to the full grade days. They don't go to the individual section type or voice type. They miss that additional practice. So if I'm Mrs. Lister, you still look confused, I'm sorry. If I'm Mrs. Lister, on days two, four, six, my entire grade six course comes in. There's like 50 kids. Mm -hmm. On days one, three, five, some of those kids, and there's a lot of them, also take band. They're not there. They go to band on days one, three, five. So Mrs. Lister is left with a smaller group of kids. She divides them up, sometimes by gender, to work on different voice types. And if she's not working with, you know, focused her instruction on one group, she gives an assignment to the other group. I want you to practice this song. I want you to work on the, on the, you know, these melodies, and I'll be right back over to you. The reverse happens with Mr. Foreman. Okay. For three days, he has the entire grade six, the junior cadet band comes in, and they, you know, they do their whole thing with percussion, woodwind, brass. But then on the other days, some of those kids go to chorus, and who's ever remaining, he works with them by instrument type so that he can particularly focus on percussion or, or I mean, I brass. think my concern is for students who would like to participate in chorus and band, they're basically eliminating their chance to take some of those other courses. So we do, yes, I agree, I agree with you. It's a full, it's an everyday commitment, band and chorus. So students have to understand that. It's explained in the letter home. However, if, you know, individual exceptions are made. If a student has a lot of services, is receiving a lot of specialized instruction and has very limited space in their schedule, then we do say just go just go to the grade level chorus. Don't go to the special instruction on the other days. Is there a way to offer it for like an every other day so they can fit in like a tech ed or a robotics or video So production? as I said in the paper, the other thing that Mrs. and you can ask her, Mrs. Willis asked me to do was improve our performing arts. So when I came, we didn't have a chorus teacher. We had Mr. Foreman teaching band and chorus. Mr. Foreman is an outstanding band director. He, he's not a, a choral director. He did it because he was asked to do it. So soon after I was hired, I you know, worked to realize we don't have, it was a staffing issue. And we hired Thaddeus Bell. I don't know if you remember Thaddeus Bell, but Thaddeus Bell came on board as a chorus director. And we slowly began to build our chorus department. That caught the attention of one of the greatest performing arts teachers I've had the pleasure of working with, Carla Lister, started to see the, she saw an opportunity for growth at the middle school. She asked to transfer when Thaddeus Bell left. And since she has, has come, she's, I think, clearly made a huge impact on the level, of the quality and level of our performing arts program. If she was standing next to me today, she would advocate for her program, she would advocate for her arts, and she would say, I need to see them every day. If it's a directive from the school committee, I'll certainly do whatever, whatever I'm told to do by the superintendent. But the performing arts department, I feel very confidently, has improved since 2011 when I arrived. And it's because there's more face time with the students. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact either why this was started. I mean, this was started, as Kathy said, to fill the study, study blocks. Really. And right. they've completely filled them. And as far as choosing electives, I mean, at the high school level, you have to make choices. You can't choose every elective you might want to take, right? I mean, you, so there's only so That's many correct. courses you can take. I found the explanation very good. I mean, I, I have a much better understanding now of, of how the whole thing works. And I think the key is when she starts out by saying these aren't electives. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not electives. Mm -hmm. They're not giving students the ability to choose. They're trying to fill this time right. with with great opportunities to hopefully. Opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, if a student elects to take chorus and, and band, then they can't take something else, you know. And if they need the academic services, that's the time when you're going to pull them out and you're going to give them the academic services. So, uh, again, I think if it can be structured better, I'm not sure, but I think that was a very good explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for putting that together. All right. Buffy? Yeah, I just wanted to say that Kathy has been so wonderful to work with. She's answered every email. I've met with her. Thank you, Buffy. Time.
is a little more confusing than the letter that gets sent home with your schedule. It's still even set up differently than the high schools, um, how they explain their academic credits. So I think that as a first step, I think just a better explanation, just like you got tonight, could be conveyed to parents because, you know, I'm sure you both saw on Facebook, there are a lot of parents who said, you know, we wouldn't have signed up for course if we knew it was every day. We, we don't understand, and there was this big misconception about elective versus general arts, which mm -hmm. several of us tried to clarify. Um, but it's been, been wonderful. It's a shame because now I'm facing a decision to drop band and chorus because my child wants to take everything. There is no possible way. We have such an incredible general arts program. We have five different things you can take. And if you're in band or chorus, not and chorus, band or chorus, the most you would ever take is four. Because you would take one each year and then you get a chance. But that's kind of a scheduling reality. When I looked at this, it seemed to me like a puzzle, and I give you a lot of credit for your <laughs> work to fit this together like that. I mean, that's got to be kind of a scheduling nightmare almost to be able to fit we, all this we together. We did spend time a few years ago visiting many other middle schools. Well, you remember NRMS 2.0. Part of that was a general arts looking at how other schools schedule their students for general arts because there is it would be a staffing issue if we froze in the time for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade to make the most of, our general arts teachers work very hard and have very little wiggle room in their schedule. So to change it around, uh, w you know, it could, it, it could potentially be a staffing issue. I mean, one option is to move band and chorus after school, but then that's going to bump into the drama club program that Mrs. Lister does. They're already preparing for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, so I don't know when kids would, after school, Mrs. Lister, again, if she would hear, would tell you, if you move it to after school, I'm going to lose kids. I'm going to lose kids to athletics. I'm going to lose kids to family obligations. I'm going to lose kids to our incredible after school offerings that we have. And I, I'm not sure if you're aware of how many clubs and just really terrific, you know, opportunities we have for kids after school. So chorus and band may be under selected if it were moved to after school. I mean, just the only concern is what Buffy shared was that my son dropped band coming to the middle school didn't want to miss out on some of those other classes. So, you know, it's the reality, yes, but I feel that you know, a well-rounded student possibly could have done both in the long run, and um, I just don't want students to have to make that choice. It's a reality, they may have to, I, but. Yeah, I mean, students have to make choices all the time, yeah. but, you know. Our numbers are increasing for the performing arts for chorus and band, so if we get to a point I mean, everything is about data. If we get to a point where we see the numbers dropping, and I can certainly get the earlier percentage I mentioned, I can get to John about the number of students who take health, but I can also get you a number of students who take chorus and band. It's not going down. If we get to a point where it's going down, then that, to me, would be an indication that maybe there's a problem with students having to choose. It's a very, both of them are very robust programs that are growing. I understand the choice issue. I, I, I just personally don't think health should be a choice. It should be a requirement. Well, that's sixth, something the project sixth grade back to up. us to do. Well, well, the, well the administration. Not, well, yeah. I right? mean, it's just interesting that the state requires the PE component. Uh, sure. Correct. Over the health. I mean, that to me is interesting. That, that seems it's backwards curious. to me. But I think as a district, I think especially with Claudia's presentation, right. I think that, in my, my opinion, is a no-brainer and eighth graders should all be required to take health. But in high school, they're not required to take health 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I could see a, a space for pl saying that there has to be one year of health in the middle school. High school is 9 seven. and 10 or just 9? Half a year 9, half a year 10. Right. So. Right. I'm just saying. So right, no, no. That, so that is isn't that is an option. Right. So it, if there's. It doesn't have to be all three years. But, you know. I also and they're, they're also semester-long classes. Right. They're not a full exactly year. Exactly, not a full um, year, which he brought, right. So I actually look at it, if it's every other day and it's a semester, it's actually just a quarter right. of the year that they're getting it. Yeah, it's about 45 meetings, yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. And I, I, I don't think, think that's a lot could, to ask. Chairman, I think, <laughs> you know, I think we would all agree that Claudia Brown is very spirited in her passion for health education. I think the model that she presented to all of you last year was a significant gain. <coughs> 
for yeah. middle school students in their health education program. I, I, mean, I think we, this year is going to be the first year of that project, and I think we can expect that to have a, you know, I think a, 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 a good and solid impact for students on exposing them to the kinds of things that are age appropriate and they should be hearing about that they hadn't been previously. So I just don't want to lose sight of that. Keep in mind, like what the state requires is not what we should be. I think if you're going to do more with that, you're going to have to eliminate something. I would. I was just going to say that, Mr. Venencia. I would have to remove, and then, I mean, I'm obviously we're not going to talk about that tonight, but I would have to remove something, yeah. video production or tech ed or computers. I, there, isn't an, there isn't a way to do that or reduce PE. Yeah. But I think if Claudia were here, Claudia and Carla, I should have brought them, Claudia would say that, uh, she understands the model at the middle school, and although she would love to see every student take health, she knows how important it is for every student to get moving, mm -hmm. and they have PE full year, all, all, you know, every three, all three years, every other day. I understand the the vagaries of the schedule and everything. I'm just saying, for me, as a lay person who's not a teacher or an administrator. It seems to me that health education should be a requirement in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I think it should be a requirement in eleventh and twelfth grade too. I, I would I really agree with that. I think but we, again, heard, we a had a nice requirement versus what the district decides is important are two different things. Well, I'm saying it should be a requirement by. I, I'm district. saying by. Right, the, I'm saying right, by the exactly. district. Right. I, think yes. I would love to see it offered right. in, in grade eleven and twelve too. I think there's a place for. I don't disagree. We with heard that. about the impact program, yeah. and I think mm -hmm. that's a. Right. I don't disagree with that, that at all. Be very well right. a senior course. So I, I'm I'm just trying to make it clear that I'm not criticizing the program you have. I'm just saying I wish that was a full time, <laughs> or not a full time, but I wish that was a requirement. That's all. I understand. I do too. I do too. I, I think wish the program we yeah. have is outstanding. I mean, I think you all know how important I believe social yes. emotional well being is, which is covered obviously in health with every curriculum topic that they cover well, I mean, is the students well-being moving to aggressively to get the school middle school psychologist this year I think was a great move and so I think we should just continue that momentum, momentum whatever way we can it, it seems to me you need the app for uh, solving a Rubik's cube to put this program together though uh, it's very very complex yeah. It's not unique to North Reading. Scheduling right. middle school students, six-day well, schedules. One of, my, and one of my good friends uh, and his wife, uh, they've done very well in business, and they worked very hard, never got a vacation, finally decided to retire. And, uh, and he, he commented that uh, now he and Nancy could, could uh, do anything they wanted to do. He said, the problem is we just can't do everything yeah. we want to do. Uh, just not enough time to schedule everything in, and I think that's uh, that's the difficulty. I I mentioned uh, longer school day. I, that was that was uh, a little tongue in cheek, but uh, you, you just there isn't enough time to do all of those things. And I think it's marvelous that we're doing what we are doing in that place that used to be study hall, which. I think was a sink. Mr. Chair, I don't know if the committee, it seems like some type of a consensus or at least by two members of the committee that whether or not you want to take a look at what would happen if in fact health were a regular offering and how it would affect the rest of these so-called offerings that we have. Yeah. I mean, you know, that may be something not necessarily for this year, but for next year to at least explore or take a look at. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Michael. Right, the next item on our agenda is a proposal for the North Reading High School Student Council Conference, the annual um, trek to uh, Hyannis. Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, just I think this is the annual request for the Leadership Conference of Mass Association of um, Student Councils. We have very good participation in this program. I, I put in my report that both Mr. LaPrette, the high school principal, and I do endorse the trip, if you so, um, as a committee, see fit to approve it. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Next item is uh, the fiscal year 2018 school committee budget goals. Thank you very much. Um, 
So this evening in your packet, there was a memorandum from Superintendent Bernard and myself that drafted a recommended FY18 budget goals for your review and discussion this evening. Um, in drafting these budget goals, we certainly looked at uh, many sources in mainly the following documents. We focused on goals and objectives in the NRPS 2021 strategic plan document. We certainly looked at your own school committee goals um, for this upcoming school year. Um, and we certainly looked at the budget goals from prior fiscal year, certainly last fiscal year, and looked at um, essentially you know, the priorities and what we were able to achieve with the f adoption of the fiscal 2017 budget and, um, you know, what we uh, are viewing as fiscal priorities as we approach um, fiscal, the de development process of fiscal 2008 budget. Um, so this evening, uh, what's broken down uh, in the packet is a recommended goals for fiscal 2018, really to start the discussion and then for your point of reference, we also include the adopted and approved fiscal 2017 budget goals were included in the packet as well. Um, the first two goals are very similar to what they have been in the past, um, with the main goal, number one, being to support year one of NRPS 2021. That goal would focus on hiring identified personnel, supporting staff training and professional development, purchasing the identified materials and instructional technology supplies and equipment, and funding small capital requests. So all the major objectives of personnel, professional development, instructional materials, technology, and small capital that um, is certainly discussed in NRPS 21, as well as maintaining established student-teacher ratio guidelines of the school committee would all encompass um, goal number one to support NRPS 2021. Goal number two has been consistent in prior years and we feel it should continue would be to maintain the commitment to upkeep school facilities. Certainly maintaining repair and we uh, you know, emphasize enhancing the facilities and grounds would be an important part of the process. Um, evaluating the need for additional staffing and services to support the whole district but certainly a focus on the middle school and high school campus. Um, it's certainly a topic that we've discussed the last couple of budget cycles and we feel it, it will need to be a big part of the fiscal 2008 process. Evaluating the operational costs associated with the middle school, high school campus. So certainly we're in year two of this building being fully op operated. We're continuing to learn about the various operational costs to keep to maintain this beautiful facility. and. Um, we feel that will be, need to be a part of the discussion as it was uh, last year, um, as we approach this year as well. Um, evaluate the effectiveness of the new contracted service agreements, uh, mainly landscaping, energy management, and on-call maintenance. So we, uh, one of the uh, achievements through the fiscal 2017 process was the adoption and uh, the allocation of funds for some energy management contracts and landscaping contracts. and. We think there should be an evaluation of these agreements as we approach fiscal 2018. And as an annual review, uh, we think it's important uh, to evaluate the facility rental fee schedule, and we would plan on or recommend that that also take place this year, and that something that would take place annually. Um, goal number three that's being proposed is similar to what has been in the past. As you know, in the monthly budget updates, we always seem to have a focus or a highlight of the food service program. Um, and the challenges as well as the, the, the status of the program, both financially and operationally. So goal number three would be to continue to evaluate the food service program, including the success of the new breakfast program that recently was added to the high school, and recommend any enha enhancements if necessary for the 2017-18 school year. Um, goal number four we think is a very important goal. It <coughs> certainly was highlighted in, as a school committee goal this year and we wanted to make sure there's cohesion with the budget goal and that would be to increase community awareness of the budget process through use of multimedia and that would be through several platforms, certainly um, through articles in, in, in the transcript, through use of the website, through use of uh, the, the NRPS Finance Twitter account, um, as well as through the public hearings, you know, we feel we could 
expand that to potentially some, some videos and online videos posting on the website and really uh, increase that awareness would be a priority. Uh, I will note personally, it's also a, a main goal of my own education plan for fiscal 2017-18. Um, update the five-year capital improvement plan for school vehicles, facilities, and technology is goal number five. This is, we certainly focused on this already through the month of September, and we just adopted um, the three- and five-year plan and prior list of priorities that will be submitted to the CIPC. We all know those focus on vehicles, facilities, and technology, so we're well on the way uh, there. Um, priority number, goal number six, continue to remain informed of any new potential financial impact of federal and state unfunded mandates on the North Reading Public Schools. So as we know, a couple, a few years ago, we started the process of attempting to identify, quantify the financial impact of the various state mandates, on many of which are unfunded. Um, we continued to look at this. We looked at this again last year, and there was a detailed presentation given and information uh, regarding this, this impact. So we feel it would be important to just keep it on and if there are any new or changes that come about to stay informed. Priority number seven or goal number seven, commit to the restoration of school and department operating budgets. This was a goal that was on uh, in fiscal 2017. We fell just short of being able to accomplish that as we had to face some difficult, challenging decisions um, at the end of the fiscal 2017 budget process. We feel uh, this will need to be a priority and, and a goal and a focus during fiscal 2018. Um, prior, goal number nine, manage unforeseen costs. This has been a similar goal in the past. Uh, we feel it's important to continue this focus, um, certainly unforeseen costs, including special education costs, transportation costs, energy or utility costs, maintenance costs, wastewater treatment plant operations, all of which are going to play a huge role in the development of the fiscal 2018 budget, and uh, we feel this should be a, a focus here as well. Um, Goal number nine, we've discussed this during the, the budget process last year. There was a detailed conversation about um, this topic during the public hearing last year, and we feel it would, it's appropriate that it's a focus um, And as we look at the fiscal 2018 budget process. And it states, through periodic updates, continue to evaluate the impact of the contribution of fees to the annual budget offset, offset and explore options for reducing fees for athletics, extracurricular activities, kindergarten, tuition, busing, and all educational programs as a long-term budget goal. So we certainly looked at the percentage of these offsets, the amount of revenue that we've come to rely on, and we feel we can certainly give updates throughout this process to keep everyone informed and um, look at ways of how we can mitigate and, 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 and reduce uh, fees. Um, and then the final goal has been a goal that's been in existence for a, a number of years, and we feel it's an important um, part of the process as well, is to develop a school district budget supported by the finance planning team. So that's certainly the uh, finance planning team, uh, chairs and vice chairs of all the major boards and committees, finance committee, board of selectmen, school committee, uh, certainly myself and Mr. Bernard, as well as the town administrator and the town fi finance director serve on this committee. It's been a val an invaluable process to developing both town and school department budgets, and we would certainly want uh, the support of the finance planning team as we approach fiscal 2018. So that being said, those were the 10 goals that Superintendent Bernard and I have drafted. As, again, we looked at those, those sources I, I referenced, and I'll just open it up to any discussion. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, I was looking under number one where we're supporting NRPS 2021 and student teacher ratio guidelines. One concern that we had in our goals was the high school class size. I'd make that a separate goal. I think that's so should be number I think one on our list. I feel that we need to really be descriptive of mm -hmm. and include that okay. in a separate goal. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I, I that was the first thing on my mind as well. I yeah. didn't know that we needed to put it as a separate goal because I thought we needed to be inclusive. So that may affect the other set class sizes and other grades too, but that's fine with me. It's just semantics, but I agree 100% that's uh, one of our top well, I think objectives. that first one, strive to maintain. I don't want 
us to lose sight of the high school class size and I think yep. to kind of prioritize that in and of itself would be helpful. It, you could put it under that goal, but I don't know if that's. Well, I have no problem, Mel. I mean, again, I think I'm, I'm in a full agreement with you guys on that. Just a question of how we state it. Yeah, I'm not sure how we state it. Anything else? Um, I'd like to add a new. Um, I, I know it's really important to develop a school district budget supported by the finance planning team, planning team, but I think before that should be a goal to develop a school district budget that meets the needs of all students in the North Reading School District. That to me is the priority, and then we can meet the. I couldn't agree more. I think it sends a little bit of a message. Absolutely, so that's where we're going. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Can I get a motion that includes uh, those? I get that one. If we could just, yeah, yeah, just for clarification. Yes. So, so we would have a, a, say goal number 10 would now read, develop a school district budget that meets the needs of all students of the district? Yes, because then, my, I'm trying to get yep. the priorities in order. That's the priority, and then we'll and then goal 11 would be right. the, now, the goal number 10. Exactly. And for the okay. first point, I mean, I would, do you I folks would, prefer a bullet under item number one like that specifically <laughs> addresses the high school, or would you like another a separate goal that we would now have 12 goals? Well, I also had a question about the foreign language curriculum. All right. So I, I don't really see. Well, I think I think high I think higher identified personnel right. is where we would be right. looking at. But I agree with Julia. But I think that should be more. I, I feel I that we need that to identify yeah. those two things within the strategic plan. That is probably, as budget that is goals, right? Um, yeah, I can I can absolutely tell you it's in the strategic plan. Right, I know it is, but I feel that I, I would like to kind you would of prefer see to it call attention to those two. Yeah. Okay, somewhat of the class size. Of the so are the, are the are we talking about two sub bullets under number yes. one? Yeah, okay. you could do that. Okay, so um, you could say higher identified personnel with a um, target of. If one, if reducing one, class size at the high school, increase and two, foreign increasing language. foreign language program. Right. Okay. Those should be, in, in my opinion, yeah, I don't know if the whole committee, those should be our two main goals. So, we, yeah, so higher identified personnel with a goal of enhancing the foreign language program. And reducing class size. And reducing and class high size. High high okay. I got that. I like that. I... I have no objections to any of those. The one, just highlight. the one thing that Michael mentioned, which about. I like, um, and we've had some audience members discuss, quote, a webinar or something mm -hmm. for the budget. I love the idea of online videos. If you can put videos on that are easy to find on yeah. the website, mm -hmm. in other words, you click to the business page and there's you explaining right. how Chapter 70 works, how much we got. Well, maybe no one can explain how Chapter 70 works, but as close as you yeah, can yeah, get to it, or explaining, mm -hmm. you know, this, that our describe, dis described in in ten words or less. Yes, our school but why our school operate operations budgets have not operating budgets have not increased in X years, and yeah. you know, talk about um, you know teacher salaries and that we're right in the mid to upper level of teacher salaries in the region. I mean, just things like that. I think that would be really helpful because. Those are, those are the questions that people have all the time, you know? An explanation of why we have the fees that we have. Yeah, why we have the fees, how much busing costs. You know, people don't dig down into the budget. So, you know, ac accusations fly, oh, that, you know, they increased the budget, the busing on purpose so they can increase it. No, we increase the fee because the new contract is tens of thousands of dollars more than the last contract and it went out to bid as legally required and we picked the lowest bid. But those are things that I yeah. think you know, health help. Health insurance increases, yes. salary health, increases. Exactly. Yeah, we can certainly identify. I mean, you don't have to do all of them, obviously. Chief topics and on a, take all year. Maybe on a periodic yeah. basis throughout the budget development process, which chief months are January through April, you know, post some different topics up there. Yeah, that'd be good. And tweet them out and, and so forth. Tweet them. Yep. <laughs> tweet them out. But on, we can put if links I on could, I'm sorry. Just for clarity. So I, I, I wordsmithed. The foreign language pro goal a little bit. I'm just. I want to read this back if this mm -hmm. is okay. So this would be sub bullet number two: hire identified personnel with a focus on enhancing the foreign language program (parentheses grades six through twelve) and reducing class sizes at the high school. Yeah, I think it fits there. Perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right. Perfect. And I think it also aligns with your educational goals around the foreign language mm -hmm. program. Right. So okay, consistency. Okay. Thank you. 
Anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the uh, fiscal year 2018 budget goals as amended. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, okay, great. We're all on the same page. All, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item on our agenda is the naming of a school facility. Does anyone have a background as to how this came to be? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it pretty much, Chuck Rucci, the chairman of the Secondary School Building Committee, it was his initiative. Right. Uh, he did, in fact, present it to the Secondary School Building Committee at our last meeting. There was no vote taken. Um, I think he looked for a consensus. Was I think there was the yeah, right a consensus, word. yeah. And there wasn't much. There, we didn't speak much on it, yeah. to be honest with you. It was just uh, it was based on a lot of the Chuck had uh, that he was throwing this out there. And, of course, we do have uh, some uh, fairly specific procedures and policies dealing with this issue. And we have a... Um, a possible uh, approach to this to establish a subcommittee to review and evaluate suggested names to be considered, a deadline for submission to the screening committee, uh, set a date for public hearing of the proposed garnering, for pu purpose of garnering input from the community with respect to naming of the facility, and follow in general our policy on naming of and Just for clarification, facilities. the proposal from Chuck was that we name uh, the Long Distance Learning Center after Superintendent of Schools, Dr. David Troughton, who served here for 15 years as superintendent. Um, so that, that's the person that was mm -hmm. proposed for the, for the naming rights. And he also was the, uh, I think it's fair to say, the driving force behind the um, joint middle school, high school project. I, I know we're, we're, I was very skeptical. Jerry and I had a different plan, um, and David kept battling for that plan, and, and I think because of his leadership, we got to this point. No question about it. I looked it up October of 2009. Uh, Dr. Troughton set up a meeting uh, at the State House with Se Senator Tarr, Representative Jones, and uh, the uh, chairman of the Mass School Building Authority. Uh, Catherine Craven. Catherine Craven at that. And myself and uh, Chuck Carucci and Kathy Willis. Right. And we went in there that day and, and it was like that. All of a sudden we were in the pipeline uh, you, to have yeah, the project you're, approved. You're missing the, the precursor to that where we got a letter saying, sorry, you're not on the list <laughs> yeah, this year. <laughs> right. And uh, that was, uh, there were other, other communities that had schools uh, approved for inclusion on the MSBA list. Yeah. And we got shorted out, and uh, Dr. Troughton realized that some of those facilities that were being replaced uh, in other communities or upgraded in other communities were considerably newer than our facility and perhaps in even better shape there than were, our facility. There were several options that and were presented And he said, to no, him. we're not doing this, and he moved forward there were several options there was to keep remember there was to keep the old high school and renovate it make that the middle school and build a new high school there I mean there were so a number of options and one of them was the what we have here today and Dr. Troughton saw that almost from the beginning yep. it was a product of Janine was on the uh, first building committee at that point in time and yep. the building committee uh, advocated this particular option mm -hmm. it seemed overly ambitious it didn't seem at the time like we'd ever be able to push this through uh, Dr. Troughton got it started. Kathy Willis, uh, actually Keith Manville came in as interim superintendent. Yep, kept it going. Got the ball, kept the paperwork rolling. Uh, we got on the list, and then uh, Kathy Willis came in, and Kathy um, spearheaded it from there. And um, so, Dr. Troughton, in addition to that, like I said, he was here for 15 years. I think, uh, you know, he upgraded the entire school district really over those 15 years with the administrators that he appointed, uh, with the initiatives that he that he had. Um, he was really a, a tireless worker, and I think the thing I noticed most about David, and I served with him for 10 years, was that he really advocated no child left behind. I mean, he just insisted on every child receive the best 
possible education that they could in the school district and he had big shoes to fill and i will say this kathy wills came in and did a hell of a job you know succeeding him but i think david's very deserving of this you know i'm not sure the next step might be to set up the committee but i would certainly 100 percent support this proposal well according to our policy we should set up i think so how do we how do we do that do we put a notice in the paper that we're looking for members interested in serving on the committee or it's interesting you ask so i have the policy now this is new so and this is really the first time going through this new policy so as i read through it, I kind of highlighted in my report to you that I think those are the three things. I think one is you establish the committee, and then that committee solicits, I would assume, through the local paper, the action that you wish to take, and if there are additional nominations to be considered, that they would be submitted um, in writing, much like the one that I got from Chuck Carucci um, is, um, by a certain deadline. Um, and then from that, if there are additional so-called nominations that the public hearing would be the time that you would vet those and, yeah, and naming rights can come in on the initiative of the school <clears throat> committee itself and or our correct outside you know um, proposals so that's right um, but yeah I think a, a committee has to be established and do we have a requirement for the subcommittee it's membership no it's, it's it's up to nine representatives of various interest various interest groups in the community and again like a lot of our committee so I would think that we'd want to get some uh, citizen membership, but also maybe a representative from the school committee, the board of selectmen, the SSBC, the administration, you know, people like that. To uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and again, it's up committee. to nine representatives. So, well, do I have a motion to form a subcommittee? I guess that's this what we important. would need <laughs> to uh, start moving forward. I think so. Mr. Chairman, I'd move to establish a screening committee consistent with the uh, school committee policy, FDCA, uh, the naming of schools and school-related facilities. Second. Any further discussion? Do, you, do we have a time? So this would be for um, the hope would be for the June town meeting. Correct. So we have until we have plenty of time. We have until like March of March of or April of next year to get a committee in place. See if any other nominations come in. Review. Right. The nominations, or if none of them come in, just review um, the nomination to make to name this after um, David Trout. Correct. I think that's right. I'm just wondering, Mr. Chairman, on the motion, if you might want to consider adding that um, in persons interested in serving on the subcommittee can can write to me by a certain date. Yeah. Maybe we can advertise that through Dan. Sure, I'll, I'll include that in the motion. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, what date? I would give it maybe what two weeks from tonight. October twenty eighth is a Friday. I don't know that gives it a month. Or Mo that's like fine. That. that gives us. Yeah. I mean, we have time. So yeah. Okay. October twenty eighth, Dan. Twenty eighth. They can send it to you a, a written notice to me to yeah. my attention at the yeah. office. Thank you. That's if they're interested in participating, and then after the that we committee. would solicit if anybody else has any. Correct. Now the only question I have is, are we looking for do people only suggest names for this? room or if they have ideas for other facilities that they feel should be named after well i, I think uh, that with the committee established i think that they could make submissions for any naming rights See, that's I my concern also also they could recommend other people for other that's right areas i'm just you know so i mean if there was a coach or something that they wanted to nominate for it's almost as you put the committee together you take the applications mm -hmm. and then you you know there may be maybe multiple people nominated for different so, areas so, of the building. So the, and in this case, so, so this goes through, and we decide to name this um, room here after D David. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible for um, purchasing plaque, whatever, whatever we purchase for that? Well, that would be Trout. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I'm really happy we have, you know, we've gotten a great donation, an incredibly generous donation to the school from Ellie Dell. And, we named uh, we named part of Main we named Main Street uh, or, or the main hall and the middle school after Charlie Jones, but you know those things haven't happened, and I know we can't force people mm -hmm. to um, you know memorialize those decisions we made, but I'd like to see. It's number eight. It says 
upon town meeting approval, the nominating person is responsible for the cost of the creation and the installation of a suitable nominating plaque person. and the design of which is subject. See, so that's an issue because that's the SSBC is making the nomination, no, it's right? Chuck is it Rucci. just Chuck? Yeah. Rucci, yeah. On behalf of, I believe yeah. he said. Yeah. So we'll think we'll work that out. Okay, but but the other thing is, and, and I know you've tried, you you've been in communications, Mr. Superintendent, with those other groups exhaustively. And, uh, is anything <laughs> happening with those? The only thing I can do, I have no update on the Ellie Dell. Um, That's too but bad. Other than you know, it's it gets brought up periodically, and, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's kind of in their hands right now. I right. Guess. I, w I did order and have in my office the two street signs for the Charles E. Jones Way. Right. I have them. But I was asked to, um, to wait on the installation until the additional plaque, the kind of the main, I'll say the main street entrance plaque right. and the drawing. You remember there was like the charcoal drawing? Yep. Until those were completed so that all things could be installed and okay. kind of unveiled at once. So those are, as far as you know, there's something happening there or? That is correct. Okay, great. Yeah, on the Ellie Dell, it's... It's not for a lack of yeah, I know. communication. I just think you know it's it's, and I want to do it. Yeah, because it's a shame we should right we should uh, be absolutely. recognizing her. Absolutely. And but we shouldn't be paying for the plaque and the. That's not the issue. The money is not the issue on the plaque at okay. all. Okay. It's just a matter of, you know, she has a very small. It's a it's an attorney that's mm -hmm. representing her estate, and it's just I think it's, the the, the contribution was the priority item, yeah. and we have that. And right. I just think this is kind of, but you know it's. There, there is an open line of communication with her attorney. I think it's, I, I think it's fair to say it's probably the most generous donation we've ever gotten uh, uh, from an individual shocking. in the North Reading School. Right, the most shocking, generous. Great story, it really it is. is. Oh it's, it's a great story. It's just how it. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, I read this as though this committee, as formed, would entertain nominations for this one space because it's kind of precipitated by the original request. Right. So would you have a separate committee if somebody else wanted to? That's how I read this. I think that you right. do it for each facility as they come up. That's the way it looks That's how like I'm reading it. it. Yeah. yeah. All right, fair enough. And uh, that way you end up by having it be sort of appropriate for the time period that it's being done. I have some other names I'll be submitting, but I'll be telling people those after the meeting. <laughs> Dan, you can do that. For All right. Me. Thank you. That's made and seconded. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. All right. And the next item on our agenda is uh, minutes, open session of September 12, 2016. Do approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. And next item is budget update, Mr. Conley. Great, thank you. So this evening in your packet was the first fiscal 2017 uh, budget update of the, the school year. Um, and it summarizes essentially the first quarter of financial activity. Um, as is our, our practice, the report is broken down into two pages detailing expenses and payroll projections. Um, I think it's fair to say that the FY17 budget is off to a solid start. We were able to, as we have in the past, exceed the projected special education prepayments at the end of fiscal 16. So this will certainly help us uh, provide that extra level of flexibility that we have been able to also achieve in the past um, as we move into fiscal 2017. Um, on the expense side, the schools and the cost centers, as you can see, are still in the process of encumbering funds. We have encumbered all utility expenses, um, and we will continue to monitor the cost of utilities closely throughout the fiscal year. I do want to highlight this evening a couple of positive notes in terms of energy management and our utilities costs. Um, that we've experienced so far this school year. Um, I, in, it's my belief, belief that the energy management service contract with automated logic appears to be working out well. Or we, we appear to save significantly over the summer months. Wow. Um, and that was evident by analyzing the July and August, you know, certainly electricity bills, uh, particularly of this building. 
Um, and secondly, the district has continued to work with RMLD and their peak reduction program. Uh, we continue to see a huge benefit from actively participating in this program. Um, as an example, the August electrical invoice at the high school and middle school was reduced by $3,300 this, this past month, um, due in large part to our participation in this program. So August to August last year or August to September? So our, our bill, had we not participated so aggressively, um, would have been $3,300 oh, higher okay. this August. Wow. So we, they, you know, we right away saw savings for this one. That's just one month as an example. And that's certainly a good due of the recognition and credit for that work goes to Wayne Hardacre and his, his efforts to uh, aggressively pursue and be very actively involved in this peak reduction program. Um, North Reading, um, for the past you know, couple of years that we've been involved, have been one, has been one of the most active participants in that program. So that was one example that they actually called us and just actually gave me a call and said, you know, we just want a point of reference. You know, you, you saved this month alone $3,300 by participating in that program. So that's certainly a couple of highlights um, that we've already achieved this fiscal year. On the payroll side, uh, we certainly, as is typical, experienced a busy summer filling staff vacancies. Um, one note, as you may recall, during the FY17 budget process, we did budget um, you know, higher than we have typically for staff turnover, attrition, savings. Uh, therefore, you may notice on the report the projected um, available balance for mainly for teachers' salaries right now is a little bit lower than it has been in the past, but it's certainly still within budgeted amounts at this time. Um, as been the case in the past, we are seeing need to fill some extended leave of absences, um, and we'll just continue to monitor that and any impact that may have on the, the budget. However, I'm happy to report that the majority of payroll projections at this time indicate that they'll be very close to, to budgeted amounts, and um, you know, I think we're continuing to, to, to monitor and to encumber all funds. Um, certainly, we're getting a handle on our anticipated special education <coughs> expenses and tuitions and transportation. Continue to meet regularly with the PPS you know, director, Cynthia Conan. I'm meeting with her tomorrow, actually, to go through um, all of the startup years and conferences. But you know, I think we're certainly uh, off to a pretty good start. So open I, up to any questions. I just want to praise the leadership of Michael and John. And I know the school committee was also involved in supporting these moves to augment our existing staff with, uh, I'll call them limited contracts with specialists that can help us with maintenance, can help us with uh, the heating and, and uh, air conditioning, can help us with electrical, electrician um, you know, type issues. Mm -hmm. I think that's been really helpful, um, putting those um, areas out to bid, small contracts within our budget. And um, yes. I mean, they did a great job cleaning up this, just on the landscaping side, they did a great mm -hmm. job cleaning up this campus for opening of school and it allowed our other um, you know custodians and outside crew to, to work on the other schools and it made for it, it helped to make for a great opening but I think all I think those contracts are really um, going to become uh, almost invaluable as we move forward with those vendors mm -hmm. yeah we're pleased so far yeah we are working out certainly uh, this is a, a little bit off of school committee but uh, one of the things you mentioned with it, there was peak shaving. Yep. And Reading Municipal has uh, had a program at least this summer that mm. I'm aware of to uh, let you know that it's a good day to yep. peak shave. Yep, referring to. Yep. And uh, what that means is that if you were thinking of baking bread in an electric oven, don't do it in the afternoon when they, between the hours that they tell you to, if you have an electric clothes dryer, you shut that off for the yep. afternoon. You shut your pool filter off for the afternoon when that high and, and even cool your house a little bit more than you'd like it in the morning and let it warm up a little bit during the afternoon to reduce the electrical cons electric consumption. And it, most folks aren't aware, but Reading Municipal pays on a demand charge. Yep. And the demand charge is based on the highest point of consumption in the whole year. And if you can pull that down some, it affects your, the rate 
for the whole rest of the mm -hmm. year. Uh, it's a major, major thing to do. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, they don't just send the, the bulletin out with, and, and you ignore it, you really ought to be paying attention to it. Because it's, they're helping you save money for all of us. Right. If I could, if I could just ask Michael one more question on that. I don't know if this was just a residential, but in their last newsletter, they talked about um, if you wanted to, you could get involved in a solar program, not put solar on your property, but you could share other residences, that businesses that right. have installed solar installations, and they said it would be less expensive. I don't know if that's something that we should look at, or if you've looked yeah. into it, or I mean, I can certainly we've certainly had several meetings throughout last year with Tom Izzo, I believe um, the RMLD was heavily involved in the solar energy. And um, so that's certainly one option I can kind of pursue. We've already, I've had many conversations with him about all options regarding solar and, and what it could mean for the community, you know, both schools in town on, you know, the panels and various other options, but certainly, um, you know, sharing solar energy from residential homes that have done it and purchased, I think it's called like net medium credits and being involved in that process. Right. I can reach out and okay. see what has advanced. That that wasn't a big part of our conversations, but I think maybe in the last six, seven months, that's advanced to that to that point. So. The, the, the program that you mentioned, uh, Mel, is that I read a, a second piece of that. You share in the cost and savings. Cost and, oh, so and cost and savings. savings. Okay. Uh, there was there was a, a there was a, a two-edged sword. Of course, the initial uh, promotion was savings. They didn't talk about the they cost. They highlighted the savings yes. part of it, but it, there was the cost element. Okay. In that. Um, okay. Uh, staffing is done at this time. Um, now we have uh, bids and donations. It's a long list. Go for it, Jerry. You want me to try? I can't read. Oh, all right, Mr. Chairman, move to approve a donation of $150 made by the Imbriano family to support the proposed improvements to the athletic facilities at North Reading Middle School, High School. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chairman, move to approve a $250 donation made by the Honorable Bradley Jones, State Representative. Towards the, to support the proposed improvements to the athletic facilities at North Reading Middle School High School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chairman, move to approve it. I'm, I'm not doing a, uh, the opposed. Anybody that's opposed isn't going to be She's heard. just cutting that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, move to approve a $390 a donation from the Little School Parents Association to support the costs associated with two field trips for kindergarten students, one to Small Lack Farms in October and one to the Stone Zoo in June. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair, Mr. Chairman, move to approve a uh, in-kind contribution of approximately $500 from Ms. Ellen McGew, McGew. McGew uh, towards a contribution of children's books to supplement classrooms and libraries at the elementary schools. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, move to approve a $2,500 donation from Mr. and Mrs. Mel Webster um, I think it's the same Mel Webster that's on the school committee, uh, to support the proposed improvements to the athletic facilities at North Reading Middle School High School. Second. All those approved? All those Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, move to approve a $3,000 donation to support the proposed improvements, I'm sorry, from North Reading Youth Sof Softball to support the proposed improvements to the athletic facilities at North Reading Middle School High School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, move to approve a $4,300 donation from the Middle School Parents Association to support the purchase of equipment for the video production class, including cameras, tripods, and other video equipment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, move to approve a $5,422 in-kind contribution from the North Reading High School Hall of Fame uh, for the purpose, and I hope people have seen them out in the main hallway, a three-trophy display case uh, at the North Reading Middle School High School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, move to approve a donation in the amount of $75,000 from North Reading Youth Soccer to support the proposed improvements to the athletic facilities at North Reading Middle School High School. 
Second. Uh, Cliff, Maybe. before we vote on that one, I, I just want to, uh, I was a member of the North Reading Youth Soccer Association for a long time and had a chance to work with a lot of the folks that are still involved. And uh, this is an incredible, without this money, we never would have gotten this project done. And, um, you know, the, this youth soccer will be able to use the field, but it's not going to be their primary field. They just want to see a betterment of the athletic facilities in town. And, and this is just an incredibly generous donation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just wanted to add, with, we accept all these donations as always with gratitude, and they're extremely generous uh, across the board. So, and, and we we went through them um, uh, fairly quickly, but that does not should not diminish the value that we place on them. No, it's uh, all of the contributions, including the in-kind contributions, are amazing. And as one else said, the seventy-five thousand dollars is uh, yeah. was the foundation for the entire athletic facilities. Uh, project that we have going on out there. So Ann Lundell edits my superintendent's report for you, and she came in twice to confirm. Make sure it was 75,000. <laughs> That's a true story. Decimal point was she asked me twice. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even the, the, the 4,300 from the parents, Middle School Parents Association oh, to equip the size. studio yeah. for the right. video production classes. Yeah, every meeting that we accept yeah. these donations. Mm -hmm. every they just, they're also, anyway, it's great. And I just, I would remind the committee too, we do send a formal letter we do. To every, uh, to every donor. That's good. Acknowledging their, their contribution and thanking them for the district. Next on our agenda is subcommittee updates. SSBC, I'm not sure we have much more to add beyond the superintendent's report. The only thing I'd add, Mr. Chairman, is I share Mr. Webster's frustration. I'm at the same point as he is, I'm not going to. Uh, say much more than that. Uh, we are getting things done. I want the community to know that we're holding their feet to the fire. That's the contract of the architect and the project manager, and everything's going to get done uh, the way it's supposed to be done. So I just want to make sure everybody of that. Mr. Chairman, if I could, to you, you had asked me a question earlier in the night, and I, I'm not sure I understood you correctly and may have answered you incorrectly as a result of that. The work on the other side by the wastewater treatment plant, you're referring to the drainage lines and the exploration, yeah. that work has not begun. It was due to begin, but it has not begun. Didn't see it. Yeah, Michael, when, when we were down there today, it had, go there right. Today, so. Yeah, no. I'm thinking, I think that that's the correct information, that the work has not begun. And just, just to, to, to magnify on that, that the drainage came up not at the last SSB seating, but two meetings ago. Right. So this is, it's about five to six weeks later. Right. This is my frustration. And as I said earlier, at the last SSBC meeting, I asked for a written schedule. Ooh, which was a great request. That was an excellent request to make. And we haven't seen a written schedule right. for a while. Right. No. It's time to have a written schedule. When you're doing work without a schedule, it isn't work, it's play. It's too loosey-goosey right now. Right. Not, not something that we can tolerate. Right. We need a schedule, and we need to hold their feet to the fire to get the schedule done, uh, uh, the work done according to the schedule. And if it is not done according to the schedule, we need to pull them up tight and give them a, a hard deadline to meet, or we have to pull their bond. Well, one of the things that keeps them responsive to us and keeps them right. yet doing it is that we are withholding money. So we have several million dollars, correct? Several million right. dollars in retainage that and, uh, is not going to be paid until the work is done. And there's also a bond that they've put up right. for doing the work. And if they can't do it, then the, the bonding uh, company has to get it done. Right. And if, if that's not something that we want to do, but they're not getting it done, we need to hold their feet to the fire. No more easy to deal with. You know, then we, we were supposed to be done with this back in December. Right. Not this December. No. Well, they didn't say which year. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The schedule needs to show which year. The athletic subcommittee met on September 21st. Mr. Webster, Mr. Presenti. Well, as was reported tonight in the student report, there are 364 fall athletes competing this year. Our athletic teams are, are well uh, staffed. Uh, there's a lot of uh, kids playing soccer, both boys and girls. Uh, the teams are off to a good start. 
we talked about uh, the tennis court lighting, and, and Mr. Bernard was successful. Yes, it has been working. It's been working timer, well. Yeah. A timer on the mm -hmm. tennis courts so that people can. John, why don't you explain how it works? Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's great. It's been getting used. Um, the lights automatically shut off at 930, but people can activate the light on their own if they want to play tennis for up to 60 minutes at a, at a, at a whack, so to speak, and they get a warning from the flashing beacon that um, their time is running out and they can reactivate if they want, but they always go off at 9.30. And it, it's getting used. We've seen it being used. Michael saw it being used the other day, the other night. <laughs> I've seen it used. Um, it's been good. Yeah. And the tennis courts seem to be used by the community. They really are. Every yeah. single day. They've been a nice, um, this, the, the middle school yeah. phys ed classes are doing a unit now um, with, with tennis. Um, they were out there today. Yes. Um, Eric Archambault's classes, M Melissa Sheffley. It's, it's great. They, they're getting quite a bit of use. The girls hockey team, uh, yeah, the <coughs> director informed us that we've been to continue with the co-op team with Linfield and Peabody for the next season. Um, he's also pulled together a ski team, uh, that's co going to co-op ski mm -hmm. team that's going to uh, participate up in uh, Haverhill. Um, and uh, I'll turn the, the um, athletic uh, um, facilities. Issue. Right, the rest of it. I, and I, I want to talk about Fridays. Football. <laughs> Friday's football game, that should have been the student report, but Friday's football game was uh, another win. They're 3 0. Oh. Outstanding. A win in a deluge at the end. Oh, was there a deluge? I left before the deluge. Know, you, I you were lucky. <laughs> but I understand all about it. It was football pretty team wet beat right Somerville 41 to 22. They were ahead 35 to 14 at the half. Uh, Matt think. McCarthy had five touchdowns. Five touchdowns and he took them out in the middle of the third quarter. Okay, right. So. Okay. He probably would have had seven or eight if he yeah. stayed in the game. Football team is looking really football good. Football team is looking real good. Big game this week against Masco. Yeah. Big game at Masco oh. this week. But they're looking good. We'll be able to report so I'll turn over Mr. Webster for. Uh, I will say we're, we're also we're tied for first place in Division 2A North with Marblehead in football. football. Yeah. Um, Athletic facilities, just quickly, again, I'm, I'm going to ignore the frustration right now. Really happy we got to this point. It feels to me like a baton death match, march, but we're getting there. Uh, again, the generosity of the athletic um, programs in North Reading, the youth athletic programs, residents and businesses has gotten us there. We still need to collect money. We're taking an additional almost $11,000 out of the athletic revolving account to cover the cost for now because we want to get this done. If we wait till the spring, that means the fields won't be usable in the spring. Did we make up some of that with the donations tonight? No, that, no. those are all accounted no, that's for. That's accounted for. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so it's great to get that project done. It's gonna be an outstanding facility. Um, Dave Johnson is really looking forward to having that available and the coach is looking forward to having that available moving forward. Um, we came up with that, Dave Johnson's come up with a list of equipment um, that we still need that is not budgeted for anymore where includes bleachers, um, a softball scoreboard, which we may or may not have a line on. It's, it's we'll see on that. Soccer goals, um, electrical installation. I think we're working on that we to have got electrical run out. Yes. Um, a storage shed, batting cage for the softball field, um, protective netting around the softball field, uh, pitching machine uh, at the softball field. Um, there's probably other things that uh, we're not thinking of we're right talking now. Talking about the gates for the, for the uh, right the dugout, gates on the dugout tops. So right, dugout tarps. Like we're probably looking at if you add all those things up, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on top of what we've already say, spent. Yeah. Um, so it's moving along. Hopefully, in two weeks, two plus weeks, we'll see sod rolled out there. Um, Manafort will have figured out how to get the field level, and we'll um, have the sod, and we'll be watering it only twice a week because it's never gonna rain again, um, although it did rain Friday. But that's, that's all going well. Um, field facility maintenance, there was nothing to report there. No, it's been good. Um, the town, Marty Tilton's crew is working great with Wayne's crew. This new field is gonna add more maintenance mm -hmm. um, burden to both staffs, but they're working together. Um, we got the, I think we mentioned this before, we got the uh, sprinkler system repaired at the uh, Cary Baseball Park. Correct. We've been watering that a couple days a week, and the grass has come back there. We talked about the tennis courts. Um, that's about it. Um, you know, just just quickly on the uh, participation, and mainly I'm trying to make this meeting go to 10:30, so I don't have to watch any of the debate tonight, <laughs> and increase my anxiety level higher than it already is. Um, we have 68 kids playing football. Uh, I think that's one of the highest we've ever seen. Highest I remember. We've got 140 total playing soccer. 71 girls and 69 boys. 
We have 22 playing golf. Our golf team's undefeated. Uh, we have 44 girls playing field hockey, 38 cross country. That's boys and girls cross country. That's, again, one of the highest numbers I can remember. 27 playing volleyball and 24 cheering. Um, so it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, it when you think almost 50% of our kids are playing, are participating in athletics scholastic sports. in one, right. one season. So that's it. Our, our next meeting is sometime and October 25th. Frankly, the fields that we're trying to put online, right. the new practice field and the softball field, right. Mel just talked about the number of kids. If you go by there on any given afternoon, the fields are packed. There's three or four teams practicing on Cary Field. Yeah, yeah. so we're so using well. the baseball field, which means we're wearing out the football right. the baseball field. We have the football team practicing over there, which is one of the worst things you can do on a grass right. field of that nature. We've got uh, two teams practicing on the on the turf field. I mean, there are, there are kids everywhere out there. So we yeah. really need these fields to come online, and we need them in, in the spring. I mean, we're, we're using it to Trevor Park and beating that up. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it gets no rest, so we need these fields. Mr. Chairman? Next item. Oh. I'm sorry, just a quick point on the fields. I did, when, when we were down, Michael and I were at the mm -hmm. site this morning and Marty Tilton happened to come by as we were there. I did, we, we talked about, just so you're aware, that we're thinking about signage to close off those fields mm -hmm. when they are planted. Yes. So, that, so you, I think Marty has some signs. You've probably seen them when he's closed the field to rest it. We may borrow those, but I thought Wayne should be thinking about ordering some of those standalone signs, kind of almost like the easel style sign to close the fields up, because we're probably going to want our own for the future. We can probably use Marty's for the, the immediate need when the field, the sod is. I hope everybody out. works by the honor system because it's going to be wide open there. But if we have signs that it is pretty field, wide open, field closed I'll for tell use. You, if I'm driving by there and I see anybody on that field, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I and I thought I would ask the police department just as part of their normal, you know, surveillance type of thing, remind them that the fields are not to be used for a period of time, so that if they know that, right, I, I'm, you know, they 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 work well with us for that. We still so. had cars parking on the grass. Though. Yes, we. Oh, do. I know. Yeah, we well, do. the alleged grass. I actually, uh, well, to that point, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Grown. To that point, Mr. Chairman, I did actually speak to Wayne Hattinger last week about a couple of additional signs, or maybe even thinking down the road of extending that guardrail and the yellow curb. I know the area you're talking about when you first pull in on the I was right. Thinking about right, nail. That's yeah. what I think. Strips. Yeah. <laughs> no, so nail strips on the ground, oh. so that they pack there. So they, they don't. Come so frustrating. Them, but uh, yeah. you go there. Yeah. I think once the area is groomed to the place where we hope it to be, that there's going to be a little bit. If it looks like grass, maybe people won't. Exactly. Go it seems like on the football games with the batch, the two parking spaces we have, is almost, a, except for Thanksgiving, I it, think there's almost enough spaces. Yeah, it does. It, it, yeah. It's close. It's almost, you don't have to show up early. Exactly. Exactly. So it's working out. It's working out. Cliff, I have one question. Where are we with the bathroom? The, the oh. bathroom facilities that's for the uh, the field, yeah, that's um, as far as I know, that's going to have a number by the town meeting, the town meeting with the engineer. It's, the, on, it's on the warrant, right? Yeah, yeah. There's an engineer who's right. trying to put together some costs for the various options that we've asked for. Right. Okay. They hope to have that available by town meeting. Mm -hmm. We have an athletic, I'm sorry, a financial planning team meeting before town meeting. Yeah, we do. At which time, I hope we get some type of a commitment from the board of selectmen in the. Uh, Finance Committee to move forward on that article. Yeah, at the Selectman's meeting last week, an issue was raised about a funding source. No funding source has been identified. So okay. if it goes on the warrant in October, they've got to determine whether we're gonna, they're going to, uh, you know, whether it's free cash, which I doubt, bonded, or it's uh, bonded over a number of years or, or whatever. And we, so. we, we need to get it done. We have a plan in place, which I think the uh, plumbing inspector was looking for. Um, but we need to implement that plan. I mean, the facilities we have out there right now are inadequate, so. Yeah, right. and, and not, only, not only to meet the, the law, but you know, it really would be nice for the people that attend the game oh, to absolutely. at least have a facility. For you two, when it comes up in discussion, can you push for <laughs> the facility to be the bathroom and the snack shack? Absolutely. It's gonna be pushed for. I think that's a consensus You're reading our mind. Committee, right? Well, because I just remember I that, that's that you know, yeah, right. there, there wasn't yeah. no. much favor for mm -hmm. the SNAP part of it. So. Well, it'll be a little easier, Janine, when we get the cost. Get right. The when we get the prices, yeah. you know. And they are. The, um, the good news is the engineering company, one of the questions they asked the town administrator was, would you accept a, a prefab building, which is what John um, and I earlier already looked at. Correct. We had the contractor come out, and we have prices. Now, that was a year ago. Uh, or half a year ago, whenever it was. Um, but 
we've already looked at that. That's something that they did at Essex Aspect Tech. Reading. And I believe it's the same engineer, the same architect. Right, same architect. Same, they did that building, yeah. so that's helpful. So, so we, we, he's got experience, they got experience, so that's good. Moving along to the next item on our agenda, subcommittee schedule. A policy subcommittee meets uh, September 27th at 2 p.m. at the superintendent's office. Finance planning team meets on October 12th <coughs> at 8.15 in the superintendent's office. Athletic subcommittee October 25th at 12.30 in the superintendent's office. The SSBC meets October 25th at 5.30 here. The uh, NORCAM Board of Directors meeting is October 27th at 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office, and administrative report. I do have a few things, Mr. Chairman. If you don't mind, just very quickly, if I could just remind Ms. Imbriano and Mr. Webster, policy subcommittee, 2 o'clock is the high school dismissal time, so you may want to come a little early. I might be there, I might not be there, depending on how tonight goes. <laughs> You might want to think more like 140, My anxiety might take over and I won't be able to make it. <laughs> so I have a few things in my report to you. Um, first is on the little school roof. I'm very happy to report to you um, again that that project is progressing well. Um, actually, Michael Connolly and I went to the little school today. Um, I would say to you that it's very likely that the, the, uh, the project is largely going to be completed on Friday. Mm. Um, so that's good news. Um, they were doing some trim work today, um, some gutter installation, but um, it's looking as though you know, it was very quiet too. We, we, in fact, we commented about yeah. just how quiet it was despite there being six or eight people on the roof working. They're just, they're on that kind of finished work stage right now. We have had a couple of change orders that, that I've approved. One was for painting of a gas line, um, some electrical work for roof fans. We made a decision to um, install a kind of a rain diverter over a door out the back um, near, the, near, the, near that third softball diamond, but they were all small, mighty items. I don't know that they exceeded um, $10,000 in total for the three of them. So we had plenty of money in the contingency. We thought that they were prudent decisions to make. So Is it on budget or is it under budget right now? It's up, Right now it's under budget. Okay. If you factor in that contingency piece right. that we would not have spent yet. And remember, it was under budget. It was under the, the original bid, uh, contract was awarded below what the money was that had been appropriated. Anyway, so it's looking very good right now. And that was how much did we appropriate? 1.9 million? 1.743, I think, was the total. Some right that we area. appropriated or? From the, in total, that was the project cost. Oh, and, but we appropriated more 49. than that, right? 49.53 for the yeah, one, state reimbursement, one, one, I think. 793 yeah. with the fees with the 40,000 for the feasibility phase and design phase was is the total appropriation. 1,793. And we came and its products been less than that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And the reimbursement's 49%. 49.53 or 57? Uh, I want to say 46.58. Yeah, it's a, it's an odd number. It's I'm sorry, I just don't have it right off the top of my head. Uh, and we've started we've started to get those reimbursements and we had a large yes. one. We had a large reimbursement come in just recently uh, Great. for that. Um, in, in, I in copied, you saw it probably in the paper on Thursday, but I did cop, uh, include a copy of the <clears throat> um, SAT score report for, for North Reading High School of 2016. There was some very good growth in, in all three uh, areas, the critical reading, the writing, and the mathematics. I think the last, report, um, last meeting I gave you a report on the ACT exam, um, which also showed some, some positive growth, so some good news there to be to be celebrated. I had, I had informed you previously about North Reading being the host district of the, um, the Go Open Summit with Amazon, um, and that was done largely through the effort of, of Dan Downs, our digital learning coordinator, with um, the support of the digital learning team and, and Patrick Daly. And so I went to a portion of that on Friday in Cambridge. And I have to tell you, it was a very good, um, it was good in a lot of respects. In, the, the, the primary <laughs> one being that, you know, the educational value that it has for any district that's going to participate in the access to these um, free educational resources, free with permission, so to speak, is how they label it. Um, and so obviously that becomes the paramount benefit to our participation. But to have been asked uh, to be a host, to be the host school district, um, and there were about 150 or so people, I think, that attended, was a, was a real nice, I think, kind of feather in the cap of, of North Reading to... Um, to, to have been chosen. And so I, I want to congratulate Dan and our digital learning team and Patrick for 
um, the work that they did to, to uh, arrange for North Reading's uh, participation in that. It was very, very good. Kind of the online digital resources that are available for educators. It's a federal program that was started last October and um, has really made good strides in I think 14 states um, in the country in just that, you know, those 11 months or so. Nice being a leader. It was, it was, it was a nice thing. It was, it, I, to be quite honest with you, I wasn't really fully aware of what I was getting myself into going there. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I'm learning a lot in the, the digital world myself still. I think, I think probably most everyone is. It just is so rapidly changing, but it was very impressive, very impressive. I just wanted to highlight for you, um, I think you know that, you know, the district has been doing a lot of work around school safety and security um, protocols. I attached for you um, as like kind of, the, I think, maybe the third pa uh, page in the packet here, um, a letter that I had sent out recently across the district. And when I say that, that's all families and all faculty and staff with just some highlights around um, some of the um, enhancements that we have made as a district around school safety and security. And I, you know, I talked a, a lot in this letter about the ALICE program, which we are kind of coming to a close on our implementation of that, which is a good thing. That's all going to um, come to a close very early in October with, with all of the staff um, trainings and the student presentations. Um, but I also talked about the, um, the Envoy program. You might remember I talked about that on opening day, that electronic sign-in system. That's, that's all ready to go as of Friday. I think I had said at the opening day meeting we were looking at a target date of October 1st. It's ready to go. Um, and we will be implementing that um, electronic sign-in kind of visitor tracking system um, in all five schools in the central office on, uh, on this Friday. And then I just highlight a little bit for the middle school and the high school about the, the new procedures that I think you're all aware of around um, visitors to the building um, entering at, at one of the two main entrances. How's that going? Is, is he, at either the middle school or the high school. Uneventful. Yeah, uneventful, I would say. Yeah. Mr. Chair. I think it's catching, people are catching on, too, with with what the procedures are. And then the last. Just a quick question yes. about the Alice. So <clears throat> middle school had their presentation. Middle school and high school had their presentations last week. OK. So elementary is October. Elementary is the trainings with the teachers. And then the classroom teachers are going to be doing their age appropriate presentation with their, with their students. In October. In October. And then do we, are we conducting any Drill, yes. a drill type, no, not or at not. this time. No, that's not scheduled at this time. Is that to be scheduled? Um, it's, it's not, but not for a lack of not wanting to do it. It's just not on the schedule right now. A training involving students? Yes. Yeah, we did, tra we did trainings with the staff. We did presentations with the students, but not, there's not no like a sample. There's no plan for a training, no. Is there a reason why? Uh, it hasn't, hasn't, it isn't part of the ALICE protocol to do that. When I don't think we're prepared to do that at this time. Uh, we're not prepared. I know Wilmington did a sample with ALICE uh, and in Danvers. We have an augmented ALICE, but okay. we did a drill with students. Yeah, I mean, I can speak to Mr. Maloney and Mr. Downs about, you know, if they are planning to do something like that, but okay. it's not on the October schedule. I'm just thinking in general. Yeah. I can ask. You know, just as you do a fire drill or an mm -hmm. evacuation drill or a yep. lockdown drill, I would assume we would want. Yeah, I'll look into that. I can. I can bring something back to you. implement some sort of drill. Yeah, I can look into that. How do How do other people feel about that? I, I mean, I. I think you'd you have, have to part establish of the, the protocol for the right. drill because it's not a simple fire drill where you go and you walk down the right. stairs and you go out the door. This yeah, and I think everyone's used to fire drills. You know, I they think do, the they've done them. Department would have. But I, I can ask and, and bring something back to this committee. Right. I don't yeah. have any problem with it. I thought I that mind. was just part of the, the rollout. So I'm happy to look into okay. it and bring something back to the committee. Great. Okay. And then the last thing I have is a copy of a letter that I sent out today. You may or may not be aware that the Department of Education has released the school district assessment and accountability data. Um, so I, because I know that was going kind of widespread later today, um, I thought it was important to kind of communicate out to families and the staff some of the highlights of where North Reading stands. So the letter that I have attached to the packet here is, you know, I just, I would say kind of highlighting those um, kind of the salient points of where North Reading um, has fared. And I, you know, I think I called out three particular noteworthy items. One is that um, two of our schools, the Batchelder and the Hood, um, have, by, have been uh, identified as level one schools, which is the highest level of performance. 
the the little school, the middle school, and the high school have maintained their level two status, which is you know where essentially 80% of schools across the district fall is in level one or two, so some very good news. And the third thing that I thought was particularly noteworthy was that the Batchelder School is one, uh, because of their growth target having been met to the degree that it has, and again, I just wanna remind you that we'll be doing, Patrick and I will be doing a little bit more detailed presentation once we've had time to review the results that were released today. Um, we'll be doing that in November. But the Batchelder School was one of, identified as one of 49 schools in the state um, as a commended school for, for a high level of achievement. I think that's a nice, a nice moved thing. Moved up from a two, right? Moved up from a two, correct. Yeah. John, the um, Tracy Novick, who heads, uh, who is in charge yes. of social media for a mask now, she actually sent out the results this evening, and they were indecipherable. Um, but I know that the <laughs> MCAS also came out, and it looked like our 10th grade did the same. They basically said no change, which is good. But I don't know if you've looked at those yet, or? They literally, I mean, okay. it was, but it, they were today. Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it looks like it looks like, they, it looks like there were no yeah. issues. I, I would say with the preliminary data review that Patrick and I did, there's a lot of good news. Right. Yeah. 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 It, that MCAS and, and uh, spreadsheets. Were, they were unbelievable. They were, they were uh, at least, at least 50 columns I was going to say, I, it was. 1,700 lines long. Yeah, it's. Uh, I find if you click they, on individual schools numbers, yeah. and focus on yeah, individual schools, too. it's a yeah. little easier to understand. Yeah. And they weren't, and, and then uh, the columns were headed with acronyms, right. Right. which <laughs> nobody but maybe Patrick knows. I don't know. <laughs> you got to look them up on some sort of a legend somewhere. Uh, I tried to go through that. Yeah, good luck. And I said, you know, I can find North Reading. Right. <laughs> the, that was good, Cliff, that you accomplished that. But <laughs> what? The, and the SAT scores, I mean, I, it seems encouraging. I don't know how we compare to our benchmark or contiguous communities, but the level of uh, increase in the scores across the board were yeah, significant, good, good. considering both the state and national either went up or down one point. Right. And for instance, in critical reading, we were up 12 points. In writing, we were up 14 points. In math, we were up seven points and, and like I said, state and national both stayed the same. Mm -hmm. so it seems like good news. Moving on to correspondence, and then at this time, future business, October 11 at 6.30, that's a Tuesday. We have a regular meeting here, uh, October 17th at 6.30, town meeting and superintendent's office. That's our, our meeting ahead of the yes. town meeting. November 7th at 6.30, regular meeting here, and November 21st, 6.30, regular meeting here. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.